Hi there, Vinyl Community. This is a little vinyl update. I have to do this. It's going to be another little update thing uh, before next Sunday. Uh, next Sunday I will be going to the biggest record fair in the world. And I'm going to try, so I don't forget, try to shoot some footage for you so you can see how big it is. It's it's gigantic, it's enormous. Um, it's uh, in Holland and there's I don't know how many uh, people selling records and CDs and mem memorabilia. It's just huge, it's insane. So that's this weekend. Uh, it starts Saturday, but Saturday is kind of I can't make it then. Cause I got a got a concert to go to, which is the motorcycle concert. Uh, anyway, I hope to shoot some footage and I hope to pick up some really really cool records. Uh, but for that, I have to do this final update. I got um, two seven inches, which I thought were freaking awesome, and I got a bunch of records. First up, it's the Flying Lizards. Uh, money 7 inch on Virgin. This is the US version uh, of Virgin. And I never had this. I have the, their albums. I just didn't have the 7 inch, with a, which has a, uh, a B side, which is sort of a dub remix of the, uh, the, the song. So, yeah, I'm pretty stoked that I found this. This is just great. Experimental avant garde post punk pop. Kind of. Then we got this 7 inch, which I do need to clean because it sounds like shit. Uh, Gilberto Gil is still playing in the background, by the way. This is Manfred Mann. My name is Jack. It sounds like it's. It doesn't look dirty, but it sure is. I it's an original 19, I think 68 issue of the 7 inch. My name is Jack. I love that track. It's from the movie called You Are What You Read, which I have the soundtrack of. But on the soundtrack, it doesn't say that that, that man for man did it. Anyway, it's kind of a weird sleeve. It's just blank on the back side. But it's an original sleeve. So I'm, I'm stoked that I found this. And the LPs. First off, um, it's, I buy this because Paul Weller's in it. This is Style Council's The Cost of Loving, which is a double 12 inch set actually. It's 45 RPMs each side. Uh, this sounds like typical late 80s soul pop kind of. Maybe even at times a little like Prince, but I don't know. I, I kind of think this is okay, but it just doesn't reach the level of the jam, or even his solo work, which I like better. But yeah, Style Council, I try to, you know, if I see it, pick it up. This is a compilation that I picked up. It's kind of a busted again, but you know, that's the thing with European releases. The, the glue ain't always that good. But anyway, this is Black Sugar, Super Sound 73, a German compilation um, featuring some classic soul music. This is from 1972. Yeah, it says 73 here, but it's originally from 1972. And it had a couple of artists that I didn't have any records of, like the OJs, uh, Brenton Wood, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, Cain um, and Abel. Brenda and the Tabulations, and John John Rootman Henry, and the Free Movement. Let's this a little down. So this is not that funky. It's it's pretty damn good. Come on, it's got Sly and the Family Stone on it. Great, great stuff. And I picked up this. Balco. Number three, his third album. Doesn't have an inner sleeve. And I didn't recognize this. 
It's because this is the U.S. version. That one has the picture of Paco from the Rockne Amadeus video. The European version is, I think, completely red with Falco written here and then a little circle with a three inside. That's the, the European version. Um, but this is pretty good, you know, late, oh, mid-80s pop music um, from this Austrian dude. Um, Genie, brought me Amadeus, Men of the Westens. I love that track. But, you know, I really want this earlier stuff. This is pretty good, but his earlier stuff, I think, is better. Then we got... Boy, I didn't have this. Um, it might have something to do with me not really enjoying U2's later work and then dismissing this as, you know, it's U2. But this is pretty good. Um, falls in between Aqua and the Bunny Man and Killing Joke. It's got that similar vibe, similar sound. Um, which makes this a, just a bona fide post-punk album that, could, like I said, could fit along um, Killing Joke, except that these guys became fucking huge. Um, yeah, these are some really good tracks. Of course it's got I Will Follow, but the other tracks I think are even better. Uh, a Cat, a cat Uncat Dub, uh, Electrico, uh, Shadows and Tall Trees. It's a solid album. I've been dismissing that. I don't know why. Then we got Crosby, Stills, and Nash from 1977. This is CSN. Um, yeah, if you know Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young, you know they have beautiful harmonies. And uh, this is a great album. And I didn't really notice this, but this is sort of similar to the Deja Vu cover. It's got that textured sleeve and then there's a picture stuck on top of it. It's a good album, really good, um, but I prefer their, you know, late 60s, early 70s stuff a little better, but it's still killer stuff. The next, I haven't listened to any of these, um, so uh, Emerson, Lake and Palmer works, volume one. This is a triple gatefold a double album featuring um, solo work from Keith Emerson, Greg Lake and Carl Pal Palmer and also one side of just Emerson Lake and Palmer. Uh, I don't really know if these are compilations. I think they are. But yeah, I just have to have this. this I, I like Emerson Lake and Palmer a lot. So, good stuff. I also saw Volume 2, so I picked that up as well, which is just Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, no solo stuff. Um, yeah, so I like this. Then I've seen you guys, a lot of you guys showed this. I think uh, Andreas showed it, and some other guys. And I saw, this is all Goodwill, by the way. Not the cheaper Goodwill, but, you know, it's worthwhile Goodwill. Triumphrat Spartacus, um, 1975, um, more prog rock than crowd rock, it's on the Harfest label, just great stuff, embossed cover, just, I like it, what I've heard, I like a lot, and the cover is just really neat. And I picked up Steve Hackett's Highly Strung, um, which is my second solo album by Steve Hackett, and uh, like I said, I haven't listened to this, it's on Charisma, uh, 1982, which kind of made me doubt whether or not I should pick it up, but, you know, I'm giving this a shot. I like the other album that I have, I think it was called Please Don't Touch. I like that a lot, so this might might be up my alley, I don't know. This this surprised me. The Mighty Lemon Drops Out of Head, 
which is a mini album. Um, and I think it's a U.S. only uh, mini album. And I love the Mighty Lemon Drops, just great British indie pop uh, from the mid to late '80s. Just great stuff. I believe they were part of the, a movement called the C86 sound, which a lot of cool bands started out in. Uh, Primal Scream started out in that scene. Uh, the Shaman, the Beloved. And I think this band as well. This is really solid British pop, indie pop sound. Uh, I'm sure uh, Rob Paniques, you will love this. You will love the Mighty Lemon Drops. Then I also picked up Peter Gabriel Plays Live, double album on Charisma. Uh, I'm not going to show this too long. Uh, I think everyone in the vinyl community with a, a little interest in um, Genesis or Peter Gabriel has this. I didn't, but now I do. Good stuff. At least I think it is. I don't know. I haven't listened to it. James White and the Blacks, Sex Maniac. Um, James White um, used to be in the Contortions, which was a very um, important band in the no-wave movement of New York, late 70s. This is from 1982. It's Fung K. Uh, kind of reminds me of Pigback, which is a side project of the pop group. I'm talking post-punk here, so if you don't know post-punk, you're probably going like, well, yeah, it's, it's funky music, but it does fit in with the whole uh, post-punk vibe. The, the funkier post-punk vibe that you know, went around in the early 80s. So I'm really interested in this. I haven't listened to it. Just quickly, you know, Neil dropped it, but... Funky, jazzy, post-punk. Then we got Adolescent Sex by Japan. I don't have a lot of really old stuff by Japan. Um, this is on German Hansa. Um, so I just had to pick this up. You know, I like David Sylvian a lot. His music is great. And later period Japan, I love that. But the early period, I still need to work on. So I picked it up. Then we got Love and Rockets uh, Express which is on the torso label. Um, label from Amsterdam. Uh, originally released on Beggar's Banquet, though. But, you know, this is the Dutch release. Features Daniel Ash of Bauhaus and David Jay, who, whom I bought a 12-inch uh, of earlier this year. And I haven't listened to this at all, but I have another record by them that I really like. So I picked it up. Like, I picked this up. This is the Comset Angels, Chasing chasing Shadows, from 1986. Um, I know their earlier stuff. I have a couple of 7 inches from the early to mid 80s that are a lot better than what's on here. This is very poppy. The early sound is very dark and and, and um, post post punk sounding. This is very pop pop sounding. So yeah, I should try to find their earlier stuff. The next one I'm, I got from a friend. He had this double, and he asked me if I wanted it, and I was like, okay, it's got a couple of good tracks. Give it to me. I'm okay with that. Nene Cherry, Raw Like Sushi. Um, yeah. I have some of her stuff in uh, a band called Rip Rick and Panic, which I like, but you can't go wrong with this album. I mean, Nene, Nene freaking Cherry. The last two are uh, albums that I picked up because you guys mentioned his name, and you should continue to do that because it leads me to new, new stuff that I wouldn't normally listen to, or not that much. 
Billy Cobb, um, this is Crosswinds. Um, funky, jazzy, fusion. That's the name, that's the genres that just pop in my head. Um, it's got John Abercrombie, that's just the only name I recognize besides Billy Cobham. And it's good, it's funky, it's just really, really good stuff. It's on Atlantic, and it's need to be glued again. This, these European issues from the, the mid to late 70s are terrible. But that's Billy Cobham, and then another Billy Cobham, which has one of the most ugliest covers ever. I don't like this cover at all. But A Funky Tide of Sings, which rolls up the tongue. This is indeed funky. Funky, funky, funky. This stuff that I like. You know, if I like my jazz, I like it like this. Which is more fusion, actually, but, you know, I like it. So there you are. That's my final update, and um, I kept it short, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, like I said, I'll try to do another little update um, later this week before the uh, final uh, the record fair. Uh, but next next week, I'm going to show you some records, hopefully that. Are, are just making me jump up and down. This is great stuff, but I hope to find some really, really cool stuff there. So, thank you for watching, and um, see you next time. Peace.